everybody. It's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. I don't do a lot of recording while I'm driving, but I thought I would turn the camera on for just a minute. I am really hoping to beat the rain. It looks cloudy off in the distance and really kind of dark. It doesn't look like it's going to rain. Oh, okay. It doesn't look like it's going to rain, according to Siri, but it looks like it's going to, according to the sky. Anyway, I'm going to get a coffee and maybe a donut, and then I'm going to go to Home Depot. My garden, so we had the most wonderful salad today. It had nasturtium leaves, uh, two fresh bell peppers, greens, uh, that mescaline mix. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's growing really good. And we had a tomato. What the, uh, that all of that was in there. Oh, and I added some herbs. We had basil from the garden and um, some flat leaf parsley. I think that's pretty much it. And then I put olive oil and the Bragg's apple cider vinegar, salt and pepper, and just a little bit of ranch dressing. Not too much, but we kind of like to mix it up. And that was so good. So after we had that salad, and it's so much fun, when we're both off work, sometimes I will take a really big bowl and make a salad that we can share, and we just sit down together with our forks in the same bowl, and it, it's just, that's like a little treat, you know, because I'm gone during the week working, and Jason's doing his music, and we always eat dinner together at night, but it's nice to have the days together sometimes. Anyway, oh, so after we had that salad, we, we, we were on the porch, and I was looking at the garden, and I said, I really want to expand, and he said, do it, just do it. I'm only doing a little at the time because I don't want to overwhelm myself, but I have some more wire that I have not used, and I want to go get some more posts so that I can just, I want to expand up by about four times five, maybe like 25 square feet, something like that. Anyway, I'm going to get my coffee here. I'm at Dunkin' Donuts, and I like the old-fashioned cake donuts. They're not too sweet. Ooh, don't back into me. But they're just sweet enough. Mm, sorry, there was a truck, a big truck in front of me. I think she rounded the corner too sharp, and it looked like her back tire was going to drag along the, the turn here, the cement. And when she started backing up, I was around the corner, but she saw me. So, got my little planner. Doctor, what can I do for you? Um, hey, can I get a medium iced coffee? Uh, with cream and sugar and um, two of the old-fashioned donuts. Yes, please. Thank you. Even though I'm going to have a mask on, I really like this Burt's Bees with some color in it. I think it's got some kind of mint in it. I need to have my teeth whitened. I drink a lot of coffee. Oh, this is plum. What's in here? Peppermint oil. I knew it. It just feels so good. But I gotta get my mask on when I get up here. Anyway, uh, what I was thinking about is the space in the garden. And I want an arbor. So, I'm going to get a few more posts. I've got some more wire that I haven't used. And, let's see. Um, what I really want to get, and maybe I can just harvest some things from the yard. I was going to get some pavers to put like a semicircle around where the ground slopes a little bit but I just don't want to spend too much money today. And I think I've got some big rocks in the yard. We have, we, you see all those big rocks around the Eno River. We, 
we've got the same we're in the same area so we have a lot of rocks in, in our yard really big ones if you start digging so I might just do that to save money that's really that, that's what an urban a true homesteader and an urban homesteader that's what they would do so I'm gonna go with that as far as planters I need to raise I uh, build some raised beds so that's something that I'm kind of thinking about I need some topsoil. I have some lawn bags, the brown ones that break down, and I lay those over the grass to kill the grass. Anyway, I better put it in park. Looks like we could be here for a minute. I haven't done a video in a while for From the Ground Up. One of the things that was so strong on my mind on Friday at work, and it was interesting because when I got home from work, Jason said, I, if you would allow me, I want to play you something. He said, I've been listening to a podcast today, and I just couldn't believe it. The, the train of thought in what he was listening to and what I had been thinking about all day were just, they were identical, right in line with each other. And when I was young, like early 20s and just starting out, I I was thinking about myself, I was thinking for myself as an individual, and then of course getting married, I'm thinking of myself as part of a couple, and then when children started coming along, I'm thinking of myself as part of a family. But I had dreams, I had things I wanted to do, and unfortunately in my case, I just allowed myself to drift and to be subject to just whatever circumstances. I was like a I was like a leaf floating on a river in some ways. Um, I'm very thankful to have come through everything in one piece. Emotionally, I think I'm well now, although I wasn't for a long time after I left my husband. But because of his how can I put this? Because of his overbearing nature in some ways, I was forced to keep changing my choices. I felt like I was constantly having to be the one to give up something in order to provide what we needed in the moment. So I, I was totally responsive to urgent circumstances and to give you an example um, I've always been artistic I've always wanted to be uh, led by my my heart as far as bringing in an income and I, I work really hard you all already know that I don't mind working but for a long time I worked doing something I didn't want to do I mean, really, and it, that's hard on your psyche to sit down every day and know you're going to be doing something for eight hours that you don't want to be doing. Now, the trade-off is that I got to be home with my kids, and I wouldn't trade that for, they, they brought the joy into it. They were the joy in the mix. But one of the reasons I did that is because when I presented other options, like being a stay-at-home mom and making incomes in other ways, I had very little very little support and sometimes even outright discouragement and almost like you know you can't do that people don't really live like that and there were other circumstances where I had to jump up and provide benefits even if it meant just plucking myself out of what I was doing and and making a 180 and you know, going out, hitting the pavement, and getting something to meet an urgent need. I think I'm going to be pulling up in a second. Pardon me? What was your order? I had an iced coffee and two old fashions. A spray. Oh, I wish things were back to normal. What a challenge. And then working in retail in the public, it's stressful. I love my job. But I feel like out of those five decades 
that I count as being, you know, <clears throat> aware of my personality, I guess, and my power to make decisions. And I've always been artistic. I feel like only in the last few years have I made conscious um, choices to do exactly what I want to do as far as career, even though, I mean, I took an early retirement and took a huge cut in pay, but I would not trade that. I'm so happy. I'm so, so happy. <laughs> and what my thoughts were all day on Friday, Friday or Thursday, I can't remember which day it was, allowing yourself to just be completely movable. Anytime a circumstance presents itself, I lived in so much anxiety all the time because of angry outbursts and really just a threatening environment. And don't ask me, why didn't you leave? It's not that easy. It's, it's not that easy and nobody, you know, there are good qualities there, but because of the way I lived, I often responded instantly to urgent circumstances. I did not, I did not allow myself to, to let somebody else step up and give a little bit. I, I chose things that I didn't want to do. And then when I got home, you know, and I was thinking about, so let me finish that thought. So I was thinking about if you live like that, I had things I wanted to accomplish when I was 20, when I was 30, when I was 40. And because of the way I allowed myself to respond to things and to change my choices to meet the needs of other people, and sometimes we have to do that. But I found myself every decade not being in a place where I was completely happy. And it occurred to me that you could just go straight through life like that. You could be on your deathbed at, at 90 or 80 or 100 or 70 or whenever that is, we don't know. You could be on your deathbed thinking, I have done this year after year after year. I knew things that I wanted to do to make myself happy and I, I was not adamant about those things being necessary for me. So I didn't, I didn't put my feet, I didn't dig my heels in. I don't want to be like that. Yes, I want to be considerate. Yes, I want to be the type of person who would be willing to sacrifice some of my happiness to meet the needs of others at times, but not 24 hours a day. Not, you know, weeks and weeks and months, days upon years, as they say. And when I got home, Jason had been listening to this podcast that was talking about, um, it was basically the same thing. It was about being fluid and not, you know, just allowing yourself to float along with circumstances instead of following through with what you need to do to have the life you want to have. Even through this pandemic, there have been times where I wondered if I needed to look for a different job, not because I don't love what I'm doing, but um, I work for a nonprofit. And every business is struggling though. And then I think, I'm, I'm not doing that. I love where I work. I love the mission. I love being able to be artistic. I love working my butt off. I love lifting heavy containers being exhausted when I get off work because I know that I have really made a difference in something that needed to be done and I'm going to hang in there until the very last bit. <laughs> I don't want to leave this job and I love that I am with somebody who wants to see me happy and I need to remember that I want to see him happy. So that's my rambling as I drive along here on my way to Home Depot. So I'm going to get a few little things to expand my garden. Maybe hopefully this week I want to talk a little bit more about homesteading. I'm, I'm just totally a beginner in the game. And yeah, that's right. I'm a beginner. I'm a, is, what do they call it? A greenhorn? So I'm going to go 
going to sit here and eat my donut and think about some things and then go in and shop. I'll see you in a little bit. Oh, my friends, the garden is expanded somewhat. I still have a lot to do, but I did do a lot yesterday. Let me show you my little gate. What I want to do is put an arbor here and give myself even more planting room. But for now, I love this extra space. One of the things I've learned about this little garden space, plants do need room to breathe. You know, these yellow spots down here on these leaves, I need to spray them again with the mixture that, that I put together for leaf spot. And of course, so look at the gourds. That one's gorgeous. And then up in here, this one looks great. Look at that. I grew that. I grew that. I grew gourds years ago, but it's been a long time since I had yard space to do anything that I felt like was really mine and, you know, I could enjoy it like I want to. Anyway, I did expand quite a bit. Uh, I expanded more even than, than I thought I was going to. This gives me a lot more space. I gotta figure out exactly how I wanna do things. So I'm kind of just rambling, but I wanted to show you the fruits of my labor. One of my days off, the hummingbirds come out here every morning and visit this salvia. And then we have this cat mint. The cats do like this actually, it has a really strong smell. I'm drying some of this even now in the house. So not much else to show you. The peppers here are still really pretty. Uh, I'm learning, I'm learning so much. This one has a couple of peppers on it because we've been harvesting and eating. Oh, I need to add, look at the roots we're starting to see on the top. I need to add some composted soil and really give this thing some nutrients and get some more growth out of it. I planted lettuce yesterday. Oh my goodness. Do you love tomatoes and the smell? I love the smell of tomato plants. The women in my family have always gardened and it just brings back so many memories to smell that really distinctive tomato smell outside in the summertime. This is an ornamental onion plant. You can see the little, little blooms at the top. Let's see what this is. Millennium. I want to have a place with flowers, like there's the false indigo, and I have some echinacea, different things that I want to move to an area that's more cottage garden. But I've done all I can do today. I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, I helped my children with a couple of things today, and they don't ask me for much. So I'm very happy to be able to spend time with them when they need it. And anyway, I'm gonna stop and finish up this video and work on finishing up some art journals that I started yesterday. But I am so pleased with this space. And when it gets cooler, I can put the cover on the greenhouse. I'm just really excited about this. Oh. I moved a little potting bench in here too. I didn't even mention that, did I? It's level from side to side. I feel like it's leaning back the tiniest bit. I did bring out the level to check it, but I'm not gonna try to do anything else today. These are the echinacea plants, the cone flower that I need to get in the ground somewhere. I'm gonna just be done for today and let today rest. And I'm gonna work on those art journals that I started on yesterday just love the plants out here so much. Plants are so wonderful. They feed us, they can poison, they can be medicine. So I'm really happy to have this part of my life taking shape again. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.